In this video, we will be looking at Kubernetes namespaces. By definition, a namespace allows separation of resources created by users. However, to get an intuition of what namespaces are, imagine a company that has multiple teams and each team has multiple environments. It is common for enterprises to have a development, testing, staging, and production environment for each team. We need a way to make sure that applications and services deployed by one team are not visible or accessible by the other teams. One way of doing this is to have multiple Kubernetes cluster, that is one per team per environment. It's easy to see how that would not only be a maintenance nightmare, but also negates the advantage of moving to Kubernetes in the first place. We want to use the hardware effectively by reducing unused resources and the best way to do that is to run multiple environments for one or more teams in a single cluster. We would then need a good way to logically separate these environments so an application deployed in one environment or team does not get access to other environments. Namespaces in Kubernetes are a great way to create logical partitions within a cluster. Each namespace can be thought of as hosting applications for a single team and for a single environment. Creating a namespace allows creating logical partition within the cluster, controlled access to resources such as pods, services, etc., limit resource consumption for that namespace, give a user admin access to only a particular namespace. The namespace becomes part of the DNS and hence the namespace name must be DNS compatible. Do not use namespace for resources that differ only slightly, such as versions. Labels are better suited for that. Kubernetes comes with three namespaces. The default namespace contains objects that are not in any other namespace. Kube system contains objects created by Kubernetes, and Kube public is used for objects that anyone can read. While using the kubectl client, the objects listed by default are from the default namespace. To list objects from a different namespace, use dash dash namespace argument. For example, to list all deployments in the kube system namespace, use kubectl get deployments dash dash namespace equals kube system. Let's create a new namespace. There are two main ways to create namespaces. The first is by directly creating a namespace from the command line. For example, kubectl create namespace development. This creates a namespace called development. To see whether the namespace has been created, type in kubectl get namespaces. To delete a namespace, type in kubectl delete namespace development. We can also use a YAML to create a namespace. We will see how to deploy the Kubernetes static website that we created in the earlier video. To recap, it's a simple static website with an index.html that says hello Kubernetes. We have created a Docker image with that website. To make things more interesting though, let's create a quota that fixes a quota for the total amount of memory in a namespace and the total number of pods in the namespace. To create the resource quota, we create an object of the type resource quota. Here's how the file looks. The type is resource quota and we specify the namespace that the quota applies to. The specification gives the quota which is 200 megabyte and the number of pods is 2. We then apply the resource quota. Once the quota is applied, we create the static website. Here's the YAML for the website. It creates two replicas. We apply the deployment in the development namespace. We also need to specify the memory required. Note that the deployment will fail if you don't specify the memory since there is quota attached to it. We now create the deployment. Once it's deployed, we look at the deployment to see if it has created the pods. Kubectl gets objects from the default namespace. Since we created our pods in a development namespace, we do not see anything. To see the objects in the development namespace passed in the namespace. Let's look at our quota usage. This says we have used all our pods. Let's see what happens if we now scale our deployment. Open up the deployment.yaml file and change the number of replicas to 3. 
Let's see the status of the deployment now. In the status, you should be able to see the error message that says Pods is forbidden since it exceeds the development quota. This finishes our introduction to namespaces. We have seen how we can set quota to namespace using the resource quota object. In the later video, we will look at how to restrict users from accessing different namespaces using RBAC, a role based authentication control. In the next video, let's look at labels, annotations, and selectors. See you in the next video and don't forget to practice what you have learned today. The source code for all the videos are available on my GitHub page.